Remember that scene in Happy Gilmore when Ben Stiller's character threatens to kill Happy's grandma if she doesn't keep her mouth shut? Happy, uh, I'm so glad to see you. I'm glad to see you too, Grandma. I've been thinking about you all the time. That's how I envisioned this story played out, except there is no joke. The Rainbow Mafia is serious, actually, though in fairness, they're not threatening to kill Grandma, of course. They're not that monstrous yet. They're just firing her from her life's work in charity. I know I'm a little bit late to this story, but it's so ridiculous on the headline level that I had to come back to it to look at it in detail because I feel like I'm missing something. Though, of course, upon investigation, I don't think I am. A major national nonprofit has apparently determined that gender ideology is more important than doing right by the nice old lady who has given her life to the cause. Fran Itkoff is a 90-year-old, now former volunteer for the National Multiple Sclerosis, or MS Society, a nonprofit that funds research to fight the disease and support for those who have it. It's one of the biggest hundred charities in the country, with a national network of chapters. Fran ran a group outside Los Angeles, the Long Beach Lakeview self-help chapter. She has led that group for decades. Her husband, who had MS himself, ran the chapter until his death 20 years ago. For their contributions, the Itkoff family has a long history of recognition from the National MS Society. Fran's husband was honored as the MS Father of the Year during the Carter administration and met with the president himself. Fran has been volunteering for 60 years since her husband's initial diagnosis, and for that, in 2008, the National MS Society recognized her with a Lifetime Achievement Award. But no more. That's enough achievement for one lifetime because the National MS Society has now fired her or decided to have her step down if you prefer the more gentle language they offered in a January 19th email informing Fran of the decision. She is welcome to continue helping MS sufferers in her own independent capacity, but she is no longer formally affiliated with the National MS Society brand. She's now officially excluded, in other words, so why? Well, She's excluded for the sake of inclusivity, of course. What kind of egregious act did this 90-year-old woman commit to erase her 60 years of dedication to the charity? Well, she had some questions about gender pronouns. Fran says she spoke with someone in the national organization who asked her to use her gender pronouns in her email signature, and she didn't understand what that means. This according to an interview Fran did with Kaya Rychik, or Libs of TikTok. When she first asked you that, I mean, what was what was your reaction? What was your response? I was confused. I didn't know what it was, what it meant. Uh, and I'd seen it on a couple of uh, letters that had come in after the person's name. They had the pronouns, but I didn't know what that meant. So finally, I when I was talking to her, I thought, I'll ask, what does it mean? And... Uh, you know, let her tell me. And so she said that meant that they were inclu all inclusive, which didn't make sense to me. So unless Fran is some sort of nefarious, hateful liar, this wasn't even refusing to cooperate or ridiculing the practice of pronoun declaration. She's just a woman of advanced age who legitimately has no idea what the hell they're talking about. But however that conversation went, it was apparently interpreted as some sort of aggression or hostility, because within a few days, Fran received that follow-up email informing her that her relationship with the national organization is now severed. She is excluded for the sake of inclusivity. At the end of the day, end of the week, I got an email from her saying that uh, they were sorry, but they had to ask me to step down as a volunteer <laughs> for the MS Society. The verbiage I, she said was, was that she didn't abide by their diversity, equity, and inclusion, so they yeah. have to ask her to step down. And now, as far as I've seen, there is no record of that initial correspondence that led to the termination, but even if it is much more severe and aggressive than Fran and her daughter are characterizing here, even if Fran sent an email that says, fuck you, no, chicks don't have dicks, so what? How do mean words erase her decades of dedication and service? And even more importantly, what do MS sufferers gain by blocking people from volunteering to help them? Because Fran is not paid. She's not consuming charity resources. She helps by donating her time in part to remember the husband she lost with this disease. The organization bears no cost for that help. And yet, 
The decision apparently is that it would be better for MS sufferers to have no help at all than it would be for them to have help that uses the wrong gender pronouns. Or not even that, actually. Just help that doesn't quite fully understand all the new pronoun rules. It sounds so preposterous. It seems like it must be some sort of mistake or misunderstanding. Maybe the actions of some rogue staffer acting impulsively on behalf of their own gender ideology delusions, but something that would probably get reversed once the people who are actually in charge get word of it. But no. Of course not. This was no mistake at all. It was deliberate, as confirmed by both National MS Society internal communication and a public statement doubling down on the decision. After Reichick posted that interview, the National MS Society executive vice president and general counsel, as in the charity's top lawyer, sent an email to all staff saying, yes, there is a video making this claim that we fired that old lady over pronouns, and yes, that claim is correct. At least there's no denial in the email. It reads in part, We expect National MS Society volunteers to uphold the values outlined in our inclusion policy. It's especially important for those serving in self-help group leadership roles, as Fran was, the difficult decision to part ways with a volunteer is always made with great thought and care, but she has to go because no one should feel unsafe at work. If you are intimidated, by a 90-year-old disabled woman, not even her physical presence, but just her words, toughen up is what you say to such a person, if such a person even existed, which they don't. Because nobody in the entire organization ever complained about poor treatment from Fran. Nobody actually suffering from MS, at least, and nobody doing any work of any real importance for the charity, because this is the work of one person who gets offended and types emails for a living, a person who actually is a drain on the organization, unlike Fran, who worked for free. Her name is Callie Comer. She's the volunteer and community engagement manager for the national organization. She formerly had her pronouns properly listed in her LinkedIn profile, it appears she then removed them, an apparent violation of the inclusion policy of her own, but now it doesn't really matter because she has deleted her LinkedIn profile outright. She has to be safe from the real threat in the context of this terrible disease, which is, of course, mean emails, so congratulations to her on still more successful risk management, but she will be well protected anyway because she is no outlier. She is, in fact, representative of the nonprofit's policy. Because last Thursday, the National MS Society released a public statement, again, implicitly confirming the story. Yes, they fired this 90-year-old volunteer for gender pronoun noncompliance, and yes, they are sticking by that decision. Of course, with the same bizarre doublespeak about including through exclusion. It reads in part, the National MS Society supports those living with MS by creating a space that welcomes all, just not Fran. She's not welcome. And our staff acted with the best of intentions and did their best to navigate a challenging issue. But ultimately, if we have to pick between our diversity, equity, and inclusion policy, or just the dedication of 60 years of volunteer work for the cause or whatever, well, we are, of course, primarily committed to gender ideology nonsense, which is, of course, a total betrayal of the charitable mission for which people support the organization and donate in the first place, as Fran and her daughter describe. The MS Society is focusing on these words and these pronouns, you know, and they've lost their focus on finding a cure for MS and helping the patients and all the programs that go along with that. Nobody donates to the National MS Society so that gender zealots sitting in office chairs can fire the people actually doing the work. They donate for exactly the sort of support that Fran has provided for most of her life. And so now, if the social media responses are any indicator, other than the ones they disabled in response to that statement, those donations will take a major hit. Which is a shame, because who suffers most as a consequence will be those already suffering from the disease. It means a hit to research funded. It means a hit to support groups like Franz who help people with the disease manage living with it. And so any sane organization would be immediately firing the people who have compromised the charity's mission and assuredly cost them dearly financially. But perhaps that's already underway. In a move that is officially purely coincidental, the National MS Society president and CEO Cindy Zagiboylo, there's a name, 
announced she is retiring, but there is no link between this decision and the recent controversy, she says. Yeah, okay, sure. But even if we do believe her, there is certainly a link between this intolerantly tolerant ideology and her leadership, she made it the priority of the organization. Here she is last year with a message about what is truly important for the charity, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Understanding historic realities while focusing on ensuring equity in everything we do makes us better. People need to feel heard and valued so that they can join their National MS Society. We want everyone to join. Together we can go further. Together we can end MS. Yeah, together we can end wrong think grandmas trying to end MS too. It's weird how the cause is somehow advanced by fewer experienced volunteers working toward it. I don't get how that works, but in fairness to this CEO, I'm not sure even she believes what she's saying anyway. Those lines are delivered like a hostage video, so I assume there's some guy in assless chaps pointing a rainbow rifle at her face right on the other side of that camera. And I wouldn't expect a quick turnaround regardless, as the email she sent to staff says she will not be leaving immediately. The search for a new CEO is expected to take months, and the decision won't be made until the end of the fiscal year, as in presumably October 1st. Just like cutting your balls off, it's gotta be a smooth transition, says she, her Cindy. In the meantime, if you have MS or you get MS or you know someone who does, well, Sorry there will be fewer resources available to you, but CEO Cindy does know a very inclusive headstone engraver where all pronouns are available. So may you rest in peace, free from the abuse of confused grandma harassment for eternity. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting Tenet Media. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, consider a subscription as well. We have lots more excellent content to come. You can find more from me at mattchristensenmedia.com and you're always welcome to coming out and chatting my live streams as well. There's a live on Wednesday and Sunday nights. So looking forward to it. Goodbye.